The struggle to dismantle colonial rule cannot be tied to only the lauded well-known nationalists, but also certain individuals who contributed immensely to pave way for independence. It is vital we honor these individuals as their inputs often go unrecognized. Their stories serve as a reminder of the strength and potential of the human spirit, and they inspire us to pursue our passions and make a positive impact on the world. Regardless of the subtlety or discretion of their actions, they too must be mentioned in the song. This video aims to awaken a deeper appreciation for our history and the diverse individuals whose efforts sometimes go unnoticed. George Alfred Grant, also known as Pa Grant, played a significant role in Ghana's fight for independence. He was a merchant and a politician and a founding member of the United Gokos Convention, where he served as the first president in 1947. Pa Grant was born on August 15, 1878 in Benin in the western Enzima in the western region of the Gold Coast, now Ghana. His grandfather was Francis Chapman Grant, the proprietor of the Gold Coast Times and treasurer of the Fante Confederacy. He received his education at Wesleyan School, now in Fante Pim, in Cape Coast. He established his own timber firm and became a successful merchant in the timber industry. In 1905, Pa Grant visited Britain and established business connections with major timber companies in Europe and the United States. He opened his own offices in London, Liverpool and Hamburg between 1920 and 1922. In Ghana, he expanded his operations to Dunkwao, Sekendi and Akim Ebuakwa. In 1926, he was appointed to the Legislative Council representing Sekendi Takradi. He was also a member of the Aborigines' Rights Protection Society that championed the rights of Africans and was influential in many developmental projects including introducing street lightning and pipeline water to Second D and Axim. After consulting with Aris Blay, a renowned legal practitioner based in Takrade, Pa Grant also extended invitations to J.B. Dankwa and other notable individuals to establish the United Gold Coast Convention. On August 4, 1947, the purpose of the UGCC was to work towards self-government. Ebenezer Akoje recommended Nkrumah for the position of the UGCC Secretary General and Pa Grant paid for Nkrumah's travel expenses to return to Ghana from the UK. After Nkrumah left the UGCC to form the Convention People's Party, Pa Grant focused more on his businesses than politics, but the two men remained in contact. Nkrumah visited Grant two days before his death in Axim on 30th October 1956 when Grant was 78 years old. Grant had suffered a stroke in 1955 but never fully recovered from it. Although a flyover in Caprice, Accra and the University of Mines and Technology in Western Region have been named in honor of Pa Grant, his contributions to the independent movement merit even greater recognition. Hana Kuju was one of the formidable forces behind the struggle for Ghana's independence from the British colonial rule in the 1940s and the 1950s. She was Ghana's leading woman nationalist in the struggle for independence and spearheaded women's involvement in politics. Hana Kujo was born in December 1918 in Buzia in the Western Region. She received her education at Buzia Methodist School and Second Day Methodist School. After finishing school, she trained as a seamstress and worked in Takwa, where she married J.C. Kujo, a manager at a gold mine in the same town. After her divorce with J.C. Kujo, Hana moved in with her brother E.K. Dasson, who owned a printing press and was a prominent member of the United Gold Coast Convention. It was during her time living with her brother that she met Kwame Nkrumah, who later became Ghana's first Prime Minister and led the country to independence. Nkrumah would often stay at E.K. Dasson's residence whenever he visited the Western region for his political activities. At Hanekuju's last speaking engagement on International Women's Day in 1986, Hannah recounted how she became involved in politics. She said that Nkrumah was introduced to her by her brother, Dasson. Somewhere in June 1947, we received a charming gentleman. He was introduced to me by my brother as Kwame Nkrumah, General Secretary of the UGCC. During the day, my brother went out with Nkrumah to address various meetings of the local UGCC branch in town. One day, as he came back, I was serving Kwame Nkrumah. He asked me why I have not been attending the UGCC meetings in town. I was amazed by his question and I honestly told him I thought politics was only men's business. For the next 20 or so minutes, Kwame Nkrumah explained to me all they were doing and the importance of everybody, especially women, to get involved. By the time Nkrumah left, my interest was aroused in politics. At work, I began explaining issues to my colleagues and stresses and customers. Whenever I was traveling to visit my dressmaking client, I talked on trains about the need for our liberation and urging people to join the Takwa branch of the UGCC. 
and summoning people together to hear the news of the campaign for self-government. Hannah eventually became a key supporter of the UGNCC and an advocate for freedom. When the leaders of the UGNCC, also known as the Big Six, were arrested and detained by the British colonial rule for their alleged role in the 1948 rout, Hannah Gujo raised funds, mobilized people and led petition for their release. It is said that she even sold some of her personal belongings to support the movement. She was a founding member of the Committee on Youth Organization within the UGCC and when Nkrumah broke away from the UGCC and formed the Convention People's Party, Hannah also moved with him and joined the CPP, becoming the first woman to do so. She served as an organizer and propaganda secretary of the CPP. Hannah was also an active participant of the Positive Action, a movement that organized a series of political protests that eventually led to Nkrumah's election victory and the formation of an independent nation. She inspired massive support for the CPP through campaigns, which earned her the nickname the Convention Hana. After Ghana achieved victory and became an independent state, Hana Kujo founded the All African Women's League in 1957, which later became Ghana Women's League. Throughout the late 1950s, Hana Kujo continued her dedication to social welfare work in the northern regions of the country. She focused on educating women on hygiene and parenting techniques. Additionally, she also initiated various philanthropic projects in the northern regions of the country. She passed away in March 1986. I believe more could be done to honor this national icon than what she has received thus far. Rebecca Nadede Aite, also known as Nadede Ashkinsha, was a prominent Ghanaian businesswoman, political activist, and feminist. She was well known for her flower business in Accra. Born in 1923 in Osu, she spent her childhood in Jamestown, Accra. Following her primary education, she entered the flower business. Her success in this industry made her wealthy and influential, and he had the nickname Ashikinsha, meaning flower in Ghana. She was known for being a major financial supporter of the Convention People's Party and led CPP women's activities from her home in Kokumiebli, Accra. As a political activist of the Convention People's Party, Nadede played a significant role in Ghana's effort to gain independence by providing funding and campaigning for the party. She financed and campaigned for Kwame Nkrumah's first political campaign, which resulted in him winning the Ashidu Keteke seat in the legislature. It is alleged that her close relationship with Nkrumah was perceived as a threat by rival political parties, which may have led to her untimely death. According to reports, she accompanied Nkrumah to a CPP function in Ho and was served food that she later complained of stomach ache. This ultimately led to her death at the age of 38 from suspected food poisoning. Now that this image was featured on Ghana's 50 Peswa coin and some double-decker buses in Accra were nicknamed Auntie Day Day in her honor. But I believe that further efforts should be made to pay tribute to her legacy. Understanding the sacrifices and struggles of our forebears can help us appreciate the opportunities and privileges we have today and can motivate us to use those advantages to make a positive impact in our country and the world. They serve as role models for how to be active and engaged citizens and can inspire us to pursue the ideals of freedom, justice and equality. If you found this video informative and engaging, please consider subscribing, giving it a like and sharing it with others. If you would like us to showcase other nationalists in our upcoming videos, kindly leave their names in the comment section below. Thank you.